I used to be able to run like that. <laughs> I did. It was a long time ago. All right. This scripture is indeed, it concludes a bit about light. This is Jesus' words. It's taken from the gospel according to Matthew, and it's from chapter 5. And I begin with the 13th verse. Hear now the word of God. Jesus is saying, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid, and no one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill for truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. And therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And this ends the reading of Scripture. May God bless us with understanding upon hearing God's word. Amen. So when we're thinking about everyday speak, there's a word there that most of us probably don't use very often, and that word is probably righteous. I never once heard my mom say, Oh, Stan, you're so righteous today. You're surprised, aren't you? Maybe self-righteous, maybe that would be, we hear it more in, in light of that. But uh, it's a word that shows up quite a bit in Scripture, and, and when it comes to righteousness in the New Testament, the Pharisees are really, really tough to beat. I mean, these guys are the pillars of the community. And Jesus knows that these uh, Jewish leaders, they're very passionate about the law of God, I mean, they are in there. They are with it. They're supportive of their synagogues. They're supportive of their community, their schools. I mean, these guys, again, they're up there. They are attentive to all the rules and the regulations, and they pay attention to them, and they follow them. They're focused on the resurrection. They're really into heavenly rewards. You might say that the Pharisees are the spiritual superstars of the day. And peer pressure really comes into play when looking at a Pharisee. Because looking at a Pharisee, wow, you're looking up there. You're looking up at Chris. There is Chris way back there. You're looking up at Chris. <laughs> you're looking up. So here when Jesus says... I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never see the kingdom of heaven. Can you imagine that? There is a lot of, what in, how do you respond to that one? We're talking about the Pharisees here, folks. The one's up there. I mean, peer pressure comes into play here a lot. And peer pressure you know, is powerful, at times, and sometimes it can work out for the better, and sometimes it can work out for the worse. If you happen to be sitting next to a really good student in class and her stu study habits begin to rub off on you, that's good. But peer pressure might also cause you to just quit, give up. And peer pressure is especially a problem when it comes from those that we think are better than we are or sometimes way better than we are. And in this case, in other words, the Pharisees. Because there's a lot of folks that were walking around, again, thinking they were up there. And people can get intimidated by that. And sometimes people can just drop out completely, feel inferior. What more is there to do? 
which is exactly the effect that the Pharisees had on some people. They were walking around up here, and so people would drop out, feel inferior. Now, Jesus is by, by no means interested in making people give up when he says what he says. What Jesus is showing is a totally new approach that is not based on righteous law-keeping like the Pharisees. Instead, he wants his followers, as he said, to be salt of the earth and light of the world, like him. So that as followers of Christ, we really, it's not, we don't have to feel the peer pressure from the Pharisees or the Pharisees of our day. So the question becomes then, if that's not the case, what do righteous people look like then according to Jesus? Well, he says they look like salt. Now, not literally like salt. But there's a quality of salt that exists. It flavors and it preserves. So Jesus says that the disciples are the salt of the earth, which means this, is that they need to be true and flavorful and joyful to their mission, which is love and hope and grace to the world, and avoid the contamination of hate and disdain and division. And remember that Jesus doesn't say, he doesn't say, you know, you folks need to try to be the salt of the earth. He says that as followers of Christ, you are. That's what you are. You are salt of the earth. It's what you are. It's who you are. Don't forget it. Live it. So that no matter what Jesus calls us, the point here is this, is that we exist for others. For those who are in need. For a world that hurts, share the hope of the gospel. What else does, do righteous people look like? Well, they look like light. The other thing that, that uh, Jesus talked about, Deanna shared, lighthouses, spotlights, flashlights, candles in the dark, it doesn't matter, you take your pick. Jesus says you are the light of the world. A statement, again, about what we are and who we are. Don't forget it. Live it. And like salt, light doesn't exist just for its own sake. It doesn't exist just for its own benefit. It exists for the benefit of all that it shines on. All the light illuminates. Light provides warmth. Light provides energy. It encourages life. It doesn't discourage, but encourages it provides growth. If you think about the sun and what it does with plants is that it helps the plant to grow. The same thing for us. When we act as the light of the world, what do we do? We reflect that light of Christ to others. We are in that respect to be open, to be honest, instead of hide in the dark. We are to offer people warmth and encouragement and not coldness and discouragement. We are to empower others, and not, not to control them, but to empower others, to lift them up so that together we what, can do what? We can advance the mission of Jesus Christ in our community and throughout the world. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Our challenge, our challenge is a community of faith. Our challenge is to shine as Christ's light in our community so that, guess what? Others will look at us and see a life of love and a life of hope and a life of grace and a life of forgiveness and they will see, ah, ah, that's what that looks like. That's an example of Christ's righteousness or as I like to say, you know, right relationship. It is being in right relationship with God. It is being in right relationship with our neighbor. There's a lot of darkness around. A lot of darkness that exists around us. There's loneliness. There's isolation. There's division. Folks, we can be together as a community of faith, truly a light to the world. Beacons of peace within our own little corner. 
bringing the light of Jesus Christ that can have, maybe it won't have an impact tomorrow or next week, but in the long run, that sharing and that reflecting of the light of Jesus Christ has a powerful impact. Now, here's the other thing about the Pharisees. There's a lot of times the Pharisees get, you know, kind of a bad knock. The Pharisees were, no doubt, good folks. I mean, the truth is they, they, didn't, they weren't necessarily cruel people. They, they weren't necessarily heartless. They weren't even necessarily unpleasant people to be around. They really weren't all that bad. But when all was said and done, they were trying to be good for all the wrong reasons. And so Jesus could not lift them up, the Pharisees, as being the norm for righteousness, for right relationship with God and with others. We only have one role model for righteousness, right relationship, and that is Jesus. And he is the same one who invites us to do what? To be salt and to be light. And in that sense, there's no peer pressure. There's no peer pressure. Because we don't need to worry about whether we're righteous enough or whether we're living up to that person over there. Worrying is what the Pharisees did. And we don't need to do that. Because through Christ, we are righteous enough and then some. And it is one kind of right relationship, one kind of righteousness that is righteous in Jesus. And it's the righteousness that even the Pharisees would envy. All glory be to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.